everyone to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I am your host, Tommy Brzee. It is Wednesday, May 22nd, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to start talking about one of the craziest stories that college football has seen in quite some time. Jaden Rashada has sued Billy Napier, the head football coach of Florida, and one of their boosters as well as a former staffer. And we'll get into all the details on that because it is not looking great in Gainesville right now. Then we'll stay on the topic of NIL. We'll talk a little bit about what the market looks like for NIL. John Talty over at CBS did a fantastic article kind of compiling all the information and giving us a range for what the usual quarterback, running back, wide receiver, what they all go for in the NIL market. Then we'll get into some storylines going into the season. It's obviously the time of year where we start getting into that type of talk. So I want to go through four of the biggest ones as I see it going into the season. Then we'll get back into ACC spring overreactions. We got Florida State, SMU, North Carolina State, and Duke today. So a ton of really good things there. And then we'll finish it off with a Spotlight Wednesday. And this is one that I've been waiting for and I'm sure some of you have been waiting for as well. We're going to talk about the Ohio State Buckeyes and a huge year for Brian, uh, for Ryan Day and for the Buckeyes overall. But before we jump in, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show. And the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, we can have fun back and forth here. You can maybe call me out for something I said wrong or just ask a question that you're wondering about. You can use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen there, gsmcpodcast.net. It's a huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all. You get to have a fun kind of interactive experience here and ask any questions you need. Again, that's gsmcpodcast.net. But let's jump in, and we'll start with a little bit of a trust tree here uh, today because I'll be totally honest, I was getting a little bit cocky. I, I was thinking that I was fully on top of this sport. I was keeping up with the House versus NCAA settlement, keeping up with what's going on with the ACC, the transfer portal, everything in between. And then this was dropped in my lap. Uh, Jaden Rashada has sued Billy Napier and a major Florida booster, Hugh Hathcock, as well as a former football staffer, Marcus Castro Walker, um, because of an NIL deal that I'm sure some of you have heard about before. But it sounds like the NIL deal would have paid him $13.85 million over the uh, four years that he hypothetically would have been at Florida. But that hit a big snag, and the details of this contract are essentially, when Rashada came on campus as a freshman, he was set to make $250,000 monthly for his freshman year, that would increase his sophomore year, and then get up to $375,000 monthly his junior year, and then would take a step back because the idea at the point was he was likely not going to be there for his senior year, was likely going to be in the NFL. This also included a $500,000 signing bonus, which is really at the center of this conversation. Um, Overall, this is insane. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. That is something that I think we've all felt is kind of under the surface of all of this NIL talk. You know, some coaches may be misleading kids. Some coaches may be not telling kids the exact right number. Some NIL people may be not telling them um, what exactly they're going to get instead of telling them what they want to hear instead of what they are actually going to get in this kind of conversation. So it's definitely a very wild thing, and it's something that I think a lot of people kind of expected to happen at some point, but not necessarily under these circumstances. I, I think it's very wild that you know someone who is active in the sport is doing this. Um, it's definitely a very, very interesting thing. It sounds like he got his blessing from... Uh, from Kirby Smart to do this. He's now at Georgia. Um, If you didn't know uh, about this kid originally, he was committed to Miami originally and apparently had a $9.5 million NIL deal on the table from them. Florida heard about this, decided to one-up them with the 13.85 along with the signing bonus, and then all this stuff happened and everything kind of went awry there. He decided to go to Arizona State for a year before transferring to Georgia. So now he's at Georgia. He apparently got his uh, the blessing of Kirby Smart to do this. There was no world where Kirby Smart was likely saying no about this. But to be fair, Kirby Smart doesn't want negative press around Georgia, um, especially when you know, you're know you attacking um, someone in a court of law, especially your um, rival. So I think it gives you an idea that this, at the very least, is solid, and at the very least is something that Jaden Rashada is not shying away from by any means. So 
it's going to be fascinating to watch this unfold. All of this kind of came to a head on December 21st, the day, um, the first day of early signing period. Apparently, Billy Napier personally vouched to Rashad um, that he was all good with the one million that was coming in. He was more, like and there was going to be no problem with that, and apparently there is uh, talks that Jaden Rashada has a recording of this phone call, which would be obviously very damning evidence. It sounds like Billy Napier is in a little bit of hot water here. Uh, I won't lie to you. It sounds like um, one of the people brought up in this case, Castro Walker, is no longer with Florida. There's no real idea of why that is or why he was let go could be because of this situation, could not be. The NCAA is investigating it right now. But this is kind of where we're at. Um, it's, a, it's a weird world, but in a world where NIL is essentially the Wild West and you have a ton of coaches being able to kind of play willy-nilly with the rules, it gets a little bit sketchy. And obviously, when this uh, originally happened, Billy Napier was not allowed to be doing all of this stuff, and a lot of this stuff was against the rules. But the reality is that's not no longer the case. So we've seen time and again that people have been using, you know, the current rules to apply to former uh, happenings in their uh, locker room, in their program. And I think this is no different, really. Um, so it's going to be fascinating to kind of watch this unfold, whether Florida, you know, really pushes back on this. They didn't really have much of a comment, obviously didn't want to say anything um, initially about this. So Overall, this is outright insane. I think we can all agree on that. There is no quarterback in the country that is worth $13.85 million, especially a kid coming out of high school. There's no one that's worth 9.5. So Miami got absolutely bailed out in this situation. I think Jaden Rashada is a fantastic quarterback, and I think he's going to do really, really good things at Georgia, if I'm being totally honest. But the reality is there's no one in this country that is worth that amount of money. There's no one that should ever garner that amount of cash. And whether it was, you know, Jaden Rashada really pushing for it or Billy Napier in Florida coming out of the clouds and offering it, it shows you what Florida is doing right now, which essentially is just bad, biz bad business. They're not going about this NIL uh, world the right way. It feels like they're throwing money at problems. And it's not necessarily that that can't work. Um, it's just you're going to have a hard time filling in the gaps that you need to fill in. Um, so Jaden Rashad, it was $13.85 million. That fell apart. But there were two guys in this class, DJ Lagway and LJ McCray, that they were able to hold on to that were getting big-time push from other uh, schools late on in the process. You got to wonder what those numbers are. And it's not to say that they're anywhere near what the 13.85 uh, is for Jaden Rashad because – you like to think they would have learned their lesson, but I'm having a hard time acting like Florida is doing this NIL thing the right way. So who knows what's going on over there? Who knows where the money's being allocated? Who knows how that locker room is working right now when it comes to NIL and how guys interact with that? So Florida's kind of a, a dumpster fire. There's really no other way to put it. And uh, I'd love to tell you that, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel and you know, DJ Lagway is an absolute game changer. I've said, you know, from the second that they got him to lock up and sign that uh, national letter of intent, he's a program-changing guy. He is a guy that absolutely, if you can keep him on campus and put the right things around him, he can make you a national power again. The issue is there's literally nothing else going right for Florida. Uh, DJ Lagway, LJ McRae, and a couple of the guys they have on the team right now are really the only things that they can hang their hat on. And roster is a fantastic thing. There's no doubt that Florida has a relatively good roster. It's not necessarily up to Florida standards, but it is still, you know, one of the better ones in the entire country. Still has Trey Harris, added Elijah Badger, has done some really good things with that roster. But as we talked about yesterday with Oklahoma, that's a piece of the pie when you're talking about the SEC in particular. You have to have the transfer portal and all of that stuff in place. You have to have NIL in particular. It has to be fully in place and have a perfect idea of the way that you're going to approach it, not only what kids are going to go after depending on the way that they kind of view NIL, but also what you're willing to give up for some of these kids. It feels like they don't really have a good idea on that, or at least they didn't when they were making this case because – if they did, they absolutely wouldn't have done this. Um, Jaden Rashada is a fantastic quarterback, was one of the biggest guys coming out of high school, but 
there's no reality where anyone is worth that type of money. There's no reality where you should be promising a kid that amount of money because it forced him to make a decision that he probably wouldn't have made. Uh, he probably would have been in Miami at this point and would have been a hurricane and maybe would have transferred. Who knows? I, I don't necessarily know the kid well enough to get into his mind like that. But the reality is um, this all happened because Florida jumped the gun on something that they were not prepared to follow through on. And everyone will, you know, come out and bash Jaden Rashada saying, you know, he's all in it for the money. And I get the reaction. I really do. I understand that this is a very weird scenario and you see a kid just kind of going after a program and a coach and trying to get as much money as possible. But the reality is, if there was a contract signed by both those entities, if there is a, especially if there is a phone conversation that they can point to and say, Billy Napier said this verbatim, I can't necessarily blame them. If they actually went back on a contract that was signed by both parties and agreed upon and it was in writing and ironclad, how can you be mad at the kid for uh, coming for his money? It's his money at the end of the day, right? They signed the contract and uh, they had this agreement and Florida going back on it opened up a lot of doors. And by the time, you know, we've gotten around to the present, NIL is open season. So he can kind of play this how he wants. And uh, it's going to be wild to watch. It's going to be one of those things where you look up in a year and they're probably still battling over a little bit of money here and there, but at the end of the day, it's uh, it's something I've never seen, um, and it's the harsh reality of what NIL is in college football right now and in college sports right now, but particularly college football. Um, I'd love to tell you that this uh, that Billy Napier can find his way out of this. I'd love to tell you that he will, you know, put together a great season for Florida and continue to being the head coach because I like Billy Napier. I think he's a good head coach when it comes to football. I just don't think he has a lot of a du ducks in a row outside of that. I think his recruiting infrastructure is a little bit shaky. NIL is obviously a little bit of a problem over there. Um, and on top of all that, they play the hardest schedule that maybe I have ever seen in college football this upcoming year. So, this might just be the final nail in the coffin that might have not necessarily needed to happen for Billy Napier's time at, uh, in Gainesville to be over, but uh, I feel pretty safe saying that Billy Napier will not be around Florida for much longer, unless he puts together a 10-2 and two season, which I don't see is in the cards for Florida, but who knows? Uh, it's going to be a wild thing to watch. This is something that I think all of us kind of feared, uh, were very worried about, but Honestly, when it came across my feet, I was very surprised. I felt like I had a handle on what was going on in this sport, at least to a certain degree, and then this was dropped in my lap because uh, college football never rests, does it? But uh, we'll definitely keep following that, let you guys know how that those proceedings are going and who's kind of coming out on top. But uh, the Billy Napier area era at uh, Florida just keeps taking hits. Um, but we're going to take our first break here, and when we come back, we're going to continue talking about NIL. We just talked about a $13.85 million deal. Well, we're going to talk about what the normal deals are uh, for positions. We'll go quarterback, running back, wide receiver, every position uh, throughout the entire team and give you guys an idea of what the range is for these normal NIL contracts. So we'll break that down right after this. So stick with us.